Hey guys, welcome back to another one of my Gotham videos. It is Gotham's final season, so let's make the best out of it, let's enjoy it to the fullest, and let's just hope that it has the kind of ending that would allow it to get renewed on something like Netflix, just like the case was with Lucifer. But to get started though, some of you might know this and some of you might not, so just to get everyone up to speed, the season is going to be based on two arcs out of the comics. The first happens to be the Zero Year arc, right out of the New 52 run of DC Comics, and the second is the late 90s arc, No Man's Land. Now having read No Man's Land like 18 or 19 years ago or something, I don't remember every single detail, but Zero Year is kind of closer to memory considering the time it was published. So I do apologize over here if I do miss an easter egg here and an easter egg there that are all out of No Man's Land, but nonetheless I've already started a reread of all these issues, the No Man's Land issues, so I might be done by the time we get to review episode 2. But anyway though, and in the spirit of not wasting any more time doing introductions to this video, let's get started and let's go. Number 1, it is pretty obvious that this season is pulling right out of both arcs in the comics. The ending of season 4, Gotham falling into the hands of all these criminals, the whole 9 yards really, that's a staple of the No Man's Land arc. The main difference here is really the cause or trigger. In the comics, the trigger of disavowing the city of Gotham out of the United States was just a 7.6 earthquake that really caused all of this. On the series though, and as you might remember from the ending of season 4, it's all about Ra's al Ghul, his plan for Batman or for Bruce Wayne. Number 2, everyone as of the end of season 4 announcing a certain part of Gotham, a certain piece of land out of Gotham as his own territory, every single criminal or group of criminals doing so, that is and once again a straight out parallel right out of the No Man's Land arc. Number 3, this could be considered either a parallel or an easter egg, depends on how you look at it. So we've got that scene with Bruce Wayne and Jim Gordon on the rooftop. For one thing, the light signal, that's a nod to what in the future would become the bat signal, a signal of hope. And for another thing, this entire conversation between Jim Gordon and Bruce Wayne parallels another conversation in the Zero Year, beginning of the Zero Year arc, a conversation that happens between Barbara Gordon, Jim Gordon's daughter, and Jim Gordon himself. But regardless of the other party to this conversation, there's a little bit of a deviation over here. At the very beginning of the Zero Year arc, he's talking to Barbara about reinforcing the belief of people and the hope of people, but over here he's doing it for multiple reasons, himself included. He wants to remind himself as well that in the darkness there is light, that there's a light at the end of this dark, dark tunnel that is Gotham. Of course though, this is the kind of thing that is similar but is different. There is no bat signal, it's just a signal. There is no Batman, there is just Bruce Wayne. And Jim Gordon is not trying to reinforce everyone's belief in Batman, the savior of Gotham City, but rather in the light in general, because Batman, as I just stated, does not exist yet. But number 5 though, season 5 starts with a time jump, 391 days into the no man's land status that Gotham has fallen into by the end of season 4. One thing though that I do remember about the no man's land arc is it did take place over the course of one year in the comics. So this is basically a minor but nonetheless one or two deviations away from the no man's land arc in the comics. Which brings us to the second deviation and number 6. Edward Nigma being the very first criminal that we get to see on this episode. It is a little bit weird from a No Man's Land perspective because he was not there for the entire arc. I mean the guy managed to flee town before it all started happening, before it all got shut down. But nonetheless, and while I want to believe that Jeremiah Velasca, the Joker, is the major villain of this season, there's a good chance that they're hinting towards Edward Nigma being the one here. This of course is based on the fact that he is the major villain of the Zero Year arc, which happens to be the other arc that this season is based on. But moving on though to number 7, the show's creation of a certain kind of crossover between Zero Year and No Man's Land is essentially about combining two arcs out of the comics to fit the narrative of the series, because Zero Year is more of an origin story for Batman, while No Man's Land is something that happens in the middle of his career as Batman. Number 8. Jim Gordon started off the episode by explaining to us what's been happening over the course of the first 87 days since Gotham has been declared a no man's land. Obviously as well he's talking about Penguin like he's the most powerful man at the moment in Gotham and that is a direct parallel to the comics as well because in no man's land Penguin happened to be the most powerful man in Gotham. Number 9, the talk about territories and turfs, that is exactly what no man's land is all about. Everyone including Batman and the GCPD did manage to get a piece of land for themselves. But that was really the starting point because you could draw a world map over Gotham. Everyone had their own territory, their own buildings, their own piece of land.
land and everyone was trying to invade the others, trying to expand. So yeah, pretty much it was a world of its own. Number 10. According to the trailers, we're gonna be seeing Poison Ivy at some point on this season. But in accordance with the No Man's Land arc, Poison Ivy is represented over here by the Gotham City Sirens, or the show's version of them. So just like the Gotham City Sirens seem to be on this episode, they have got the food supply. Pamela Eiley, aka Poison Ivy in the comics, is the one with the endless food supply. But number 11, forget about the SJW feminism bit of the Gotham City Siren storyline. I'm not just trying to be the nice YouTuber over here, I know a lot of people do complain about this, but personally I don't think it's a bad thing over here the way it is done, because it is not really overtaking the story, that is the problem when it is done on a lot of other series. But nonetheless, the current storyline of the Gotham City Sirens, to be more precise, Barbara Keane. There is this comment that Barbara Keane makes about protecting all the women that come in every night, and SJW or not, it does indicate that she's doing something good. And if Barbara Keane is doing something good, that kind of poses a very important question. Is Season 5 preparing Barbara Keane for a redemption arc? Because if that were to be the case, then there's a good chance that the show might end up salvaging the relationship she had with Jim Gordon. I guess by now you all probably know where I'm going with this, the show turning Barbara Keane into the show's version of Barbara Gordon from the comics. Next up though is Scarecrow and number 12. So obviously Gotham still maintains that villain of the week trope, only it does it with a little bit of style because this is part of an overall arc. And we're getting all the villains of the season on different scenes throughout the episode. But to shed a little bit of light on Scarecrow's part in the No Man's Land arc in the comics, the most prominent bit about him was attacking the very church that acted as a hospital and that also acted as a shelter for all those refugees. His biggest objective, and as usual, was to create a certain level of fear, which he does do on this episode as well. So pretty much his attack over here happens to be a parallel to exactly what he did in the comics over the same arc. But just a stray comment over here, and number 13, I found it really interesting that Jim Gordon on this episode is between the two ranks he was at on the two different arcs that this season is based on. So currently and on the series Jim Gordon is captain, in the No Man's arc he is commissioner of the Gotham police and he is lieutenant in the Zero Year arc. Number 14. I think it is expected that we're gonna be getting a lot of deaths this season, but this was one of the worst that we can get. Tabitha aka the Tigress has been one of my favorite characters since her introduction on season 2. But even if Barbara's promises to Tabitha were not real about avenging Butch and all, she definitely has a score to settle with Penguin now and she's definitely gonna try to settle it as well before the season is over. But number 15, you gotta love a victorious Bruce Wayne and a victorious Jim Gordon by his side. And that is exactly what we get out of this episode. The thing though is, the fight is far from over and especially with Penguin because he's got the resources, the firearms, the firepower and the numbers. But number 16, Bruce, next time you wanna help just ask, you've earned a place over here. Now considering they couldn't start this season with a Batman costume and all, they are giving us some parallels to the comic book relationship between Jim Gordon and Batman. This one in particular was all about the trust that Jim Gordon in the comics has in Batman and it was a really awesome moment at that. Number 17, the episode might have started with us not knowing where Jeremiah is, Jim Gordon talking about Jeremiah having disappeared since the beginning of the very events that started this No Man's Land arc, what he did along with Rosalgol, but close to the end of the episode we do get a hint that he is returning and he is returning soon. I believe the woman who left the drawing of the eyes and the writing on the map for Jim Gordon, she, and if I'm not mistaken, happens to be Echo, Jeremiah's right hand woman whom we did meet last season. Number 18, Edward Nigma. what the hell is going on with him? Now last we left him, he was dead and in the not so kind care of Dr. Hugo Strange. So whatever it is that is happening to him, the sleepwalking phase that he's going through and complaining about throughout this episode or whenever we see him on this episode, is it all a product of how Hugo Strange brought him back to life or is it the result of the eternal struggle that we've been seeing for a couple of seasons so far between the Riddler and Edward Nigma? Number 19, I told you, if you want to cure her, you've got to go to the witch. Whatever the show's trying to do over here, Selina trying to kill herself, that woman that appears out of nowhere every time Bruce is with Selina telling him to go to a witch, that's the only way Selina's gonna get better. All of it put together is about creating a back door to Selina becoming Catwoman. 
So which wizard, or none of the above, we are all excited about one of these characters becoming their comic book counterparts, in this case, Selina Kyle becoming Catwoman. But number 20, Selina Kyle being paralyzed and at the hands of none other than the show's version of the Joker. That felt reminiscent of Barbara Gordon's paralysis during the events of The Killing Joke and at the hands of the Joker, and The Killing Joke really has been an influence as of the end of last season. But finally though, circling back to that very first scene of the episode, the one set up in the future, and number 21. So whatever kind of attack and whoever it is that they are fending off at the very beginning of the episode on that scene, that is probably the government and they probably do not have the best intentions for Gotham, and that's probably why all of them are united on that scene. So in the middle of everything that's out of the No Man's Land arc from the comics, we get stuff from Zero Year, and this is one of them, a parallel to Zero Year. So as it did stayed before, in the events of Zero Year, Edward Nigma is the major villain. And in the events of Zero Year as well, the Riddler has managed to cut all communications with the outside world and close the majority of Gotham's borders with the outside world. At the very end of the arc though, the military is sending an airstrike against Gotham in order to rid it of what's ailing it. But in order to do so, you're gonna have to sacrifice a lot, probably civilians as well. And that is exactly what Batman, with the help of Jim Gordon, Lucius Fox, Alfred Pennyworth are trying to stop over there. That as well is what I think is happening over here, because I think the government has given up on Gotham, and from what it seems, they might try to level it by the end of the season, unlike what happened at the end of No Man's Land. But that being said though, my work with the premiere of Season 5 is done. I want to say the episode was amazing. On a scale of 1 to 10, I'd give it an 8, 8.5, maybe even a 9. It really had everything, easter eggs, parallels, solid performances, and good storytelling. But that is just what I thought of the episode, so you can let me know what you thought of the episode in the comments down below. And if you do think I missed any easter eggs on this video, you can let me know what those were. You can let me know as well if you did like this video by dropping it a much appreciated like. And of course, if that were to be the case, you can always subscribe and enable notifications for my future videos, community posts and live streams. But until the next time you tune in for another one of my videos, thank you so much for tuning into this one and have a great day.